Okay, now we're going to continue our discussion on how the human soul functions. And this is a discussion and some questions about the principle of preclusion. So, Jesus, <laughs> would you share with us, <laughs> would you like to read your um, description of preclusion? Or yeah, just wanna... probably, I think. Yep. You know, I think it's good to go over it again. Um, yeah. So I've said, preclusion is the principle that if a certain truth on a given subject is within the soul, it precludes error on the same subject from existing in the soul at the same time. And if error exists within the soul, it precludes truth on the same subject from existing within the soul at the same time. So basically, this understanding of preclusion helps the individual understand and accept the current state or condition of their own soul development in contrast to the current state of their mind. For example, this can demonstrate to the individual that the true state of their soul is that the truth on the subject has yet to enter even when they believe it has entered. This can also explain to the person why they are still finding it difficult to act in harmony with the truth they have believed themselves to have already accepted because it is not yet in the soul. The soul does not operate like the mind with regard to the existence of truth. With the mind, truth and error are capable of existing in the same mind at the same time on the same subject. Thoughts can be experienced either from the external environment or coming from the operations of the soul that can be in complete disharmony with one another mm. in the mind. Mm. So what basically preclusion is saying is helping us describe the condition of our soul right at this snapshot in time. That's how I view it, like a snapshot. This is how it is. Yeah. Yes. So it's basically saying that the reason why we aren't any further developed than what we currently are is because the truth that we thought entered us never entered us. <laughs> yeah. And the error that we thought left us hasn't left us yet. Yeah. And that's why we're in the state we currently are. Yeah. And, and preclusion says while the error remains, the truth can't enter either. And while any and if any truth remains, then the error can never come back into it again. Yeah. In the soul, that is. So the soul itself has this beautiful ability to not be able to absorb new error without the mind can, of course, but the soul can't. Yeah. Once truth is there. Yeah. And what I like about or how I kind of visualize that is that you've got a container mm -hmm. and if part of it is occupied by error then truth cannot occupy, nothing else can occupy that space Correct. until you make space for it. And same goes with the truth. If truth is occupying that space about that particular issue, yep. then error can't exist there at the same time either. Yeah, not in the soul itself. Not in the soul itself. Yep. And that is... It can exist in our intellect or our mind. Yeah. That's the, because the mind isn't, that's just a part of the soul. It's not the soul itself. Yeah. It's just an organ of the soul. It can, in, in, it can exist in our brain. Of I our suppose, spirit, physical yeah, bodies. yeah. I find that a little um, sort of. Well, for a reincarnated person, uh, or let's not call it a reincarnated person, a person who has visited the earth for a second time, yeah. that is the difficult thing. Because the soul contains all this truth that the mind is not unwilling to express. Yeah, mm. I find it hard to relate to having a mind in my soul that can hold error and truth within it because to me the soul just has truth or error. No, I'm saying the mind is in the spirit body. The mind in this case is the intellectual thoughts that are contained within the spirit form okay. that it, which is completely independent to the spirit, the soul's mind. Okay, so let's differentiate that because at yes. one point in this discussion you said that the mind is like an organ of the soul. The mind is an organ of the soul. Yep. 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 But for so the purposes of clarity, because you just now I'm talking about yep. the truth about this mind, whereas whereas sometimes we're talking about the error about the mind and what everybody normally believes. Yeah. So, so we've got to be different. We've got to differentiate between these two things. Yep. The truth about the mind is that it's an organ of the soul, mm -hmm. and it's impossible for that mind to contain any anything other than what the soul dictates. That's the truth about that mind. But the intellectual mind is capable of reasoning in the spirit body. Yeah. That's a part of the function of the brain of the spirit body. Yeah. And that particular brain is capable of having thoughts that are completely out of harmony with the mind of the soul. Yeah. So, and that's where I think 
I come a bit undone because we've got two minds and to me there's no mind. I don't, there's a part of my soul that reasons but it's totally based on my emotions, my aspirations, my yes. desires, my, those yes. things. For, um, the, for the sake of simplification, yep. we could say that, this, that the soul has a functioning that is completely independent of intellect. Yes. Whereas the spirit body's mind does have its own intellect mm -hmm. and, and is able to express and absorb information independent of the soul. Yep. yep. And so for the purposes of defining preclusion, yes. we are saying that anywhere within the soul... Anything within the soul. Or any, in any space within the soul. soul. Correct. If there is error occupying... It, that space. That space, truth cannot be there. Correct. If there is truth, error cannot be there. Correct. So if, let's just give an example perhaps. If right at this moment in time, I have a poor sense of my own worth... If that is true, then I am not able to think my way into having worth. Mm -hmm. I must first release the reasons why I have a poor sense of my own worth from my soul. And then that part of the soul is able to absorb a sense of worth. Yes. And that's independent of whether I think I'm worth something or not. Yes. And this is where I wanted to contrast. Yes. There's a reasoning part of our soul that is either in truth or error and it can't have um, conflicting things. Yeah. And then we have our spirit body and our physical body's brain and mind. Yes. And this is the part Which of us that might attempt to think our way... Through something. Through, through into having more self-worth. Correct, but it will be unsuccessful. Right. It will always be unsuccessful. Yeah. And this is the reason why most religious religion forms on the earth are unsuccessful. Yep. They all promote love, supposedly, and yet most of them have been the cause of most of the wars yeah. that we've ever experienced in the last 2,000 years. Yeah. And the reason why that is is because love hasn't touched the soul yet. Yes. It's just an intellectual concept. And many of them even say that. They even say that love is an intellectual concept. And while it remains an intellectual concept for them, it's never going to touch their heart, as the saying goes, or their soul. And as a result, they will never act lovingly given certain circumstances. Yeah. So they will be willing to go to war under certain circumstances. If the circumstance is, you killed my son, then I'll go to war. If the circumstances is, you believe something different to me, then I'll go to war. And they'll go to war without consideration of love because love has not yet touched their soul. It's only an intellectual concept. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. And, and it, they, have, they have other feelings inside of their soul, which are true. Yeah. They have feelings of rage and feelings of, like, about a person with a different religious faith, for example, or they have feelings of rage about somebody who's harmed their, their family. And it's those feelings that are the truth mm -hmm. that govern their action. And if you look at what their actions, they'll go to war, they are governed by the rageful feelings within their soul, the justifications that are truly going on within their soul. And they might think they're a nice person and think they love and think they're a nice, kind individual that uh, would never consider harming another. And in their day-to-day -day normal life, they might act that way. But when it comes to a pressure cooker situation where their family or somebody's religious faith is being attacked, now they revert back to the soul's true understanding, yeah. which is, I'm enraged with a person having that idea, so I'm going to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's their understanding. Yeah. And there's an example of how the mind, thinking that they're loving, had no effect on them whatsoever. Yeah. No yeah. effect. And mm. so uh, there in your notes you said this, this principle of preclusion helps us to understand why we still think, act and feel the way we do even after we have received something different in our intellect. Correct. So all we've done is heard it yep. and it's gone into our memory. Yep. That's all we've done. Yep. And while that is an actual memory of the event, it hasn't entered our soul and changed it. Mm -hmm. It's only a memory of what we've heard. Yes. So when somebody tells you God is love, for most people that is just a memory of what they've heard. The majority of people on this planet do not believe it. Mm. Their soul acts totally differently. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And the same goes with uh, most other of our other belief systems. We have only heard them we are yet to actually have them as a true belief within our soul. 
Yeah. yeah. And a lot of work that um, many of us have done in natural love uh, circles or even in um, psychological practice has been a lot about trying to think our way into a different state. Correct. And this principle says that that is impossible. It is impossible. Yep. It is impossible. There are people who have thought themselves out of the state for 2,000 years, but as soon as you have a chat to them, they revert straight back to the same behaviours they would have under, under the circumstances. And that is because that emotion still exists in their soul. Correct. Yep. So, so while the emotion governing the action still exists within the soul, or the emotion precluding the action that still exists in the soul, you're going to revert to that behaviour. Yep. There is no other option, in fact. And, and it's a great thing, actually, because that's the way we learn what's really there. Yeah. So, so, for example, if you're walking down the street or driving in a car and somebody cuts you off or pushes you, right, and you get angry and upset, well, there's an example. There's an example. Love hasn't touched your soul yet on that issue, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It hasn't touched your soul yet because your reaction is telling you that it hasn't touched your soul. You can think yourself beyond that, but that initial reaction is the reaction that your soul has. Yeah. And that's the truth of what's really going on in your soul. Yeah. And preclusion's telling you that it's impossible for you to actually put another truth in there unless you release the error of that emotion. Yes. It's a, unless you release that error, no other truth can actually enter you. So you can, you can think your way, oh, I'm a loving person now, oh, I'm a loving person now, I'm going to do loving things now. And 10 years later, someone pushes you and you'll get angry again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... Yeah. Nothing has changed in the soul. Yeah. For you to not be angry under that circumstance, something has to change in your soul first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that is that all that you would like to say on preclusion today? Yes, I think we've discussed the issues of like how something when you believe something inside of yourself, it prevents another belief from entering you, no matter how much you think your way through it. And yep. this is why there's a lot of confusion regarding religion on the planet. Because because, you know, there's a rule book in most religions. You, you must do this, or commandments, you can call them. You must do this, you must do that, you must do this, you must do that. Most people practice those particular things, but they don't feel them. And as a result, they still feel like not practicing them. Yeah. And sooner or later, they do that. They, they, they stop practicing. They, they yeah. disobey. Yeah. And then they feel all guilty. And then they have to have feel sorry. And then they have to pray for God for repentance, for feeling sorry that they didn't act a certain way. And it's all happening because the, the thing that caused it is still in their soul. Mm. And until it comes out, they are precluded from change. Yeah. It is going to be, their condition is going to continue to be exactly what it is right now until something gets released from the soul so that something new can enter it. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to move on in a minute to talk about the next principle. Um, but these two principles, preclusion and our next one is absorption, they, uh, and perhaps after we talk about absorption, we can delineate between the two. Sure. Because sure. I feel that there's scope for a bit of... If at the moment in conclusion we basically say that preclusion is this aspect of what is my current condition mm -hmm. and why is it my current condition? It's my current condition because there are things in my soul that preclude me from changing. Yep. Right? So in the case of, an exa of the other examples that we could give, any person who desires change and who is not changing has a reason for them not changing in their soul. Yep. And what they need to do is find that reason. Yes. Once they find that reason, then they will change. And preclusion is telling you that this has to be the case because change is an automatic result. Mm -hmm. of you finding the reason and releasing it from your soul. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I find a lot of people who use their intellect to follow divine truth not very successful. And the reason why is because they're trying, using their mind, to, to act in a certain way, a changed way, while at the same time their soul is saying, don't do that, don't do that, do something else. Do, do, you know, the soul is really saying, don't do that, that's wrong. Yeah. You know, even, what, even though their mind's saying it's right, their soul's saying, don't do that, that's wrong. So you put a person in a situation where their child is harmed by another person, the average person will revert to rage. The average person will revert to trying to protect the child through violence, right? Why is that? Because that feeling is still in their soul. And for any change to happen, that feeling has to come out of their soul. That's the, and that's what preclusion is. Preclusion is while you have this feeling in your soul, 
nothing can change. That is your condition and it will be your condition for as long as you retain that condition in your soul. It's going to stay like that forever, potentially. Yeah. Uh, of course, that's probably not possible given an infinite amount of time. Sooner or later, somebody realizes, oh, maybe I need to change. <laughs> but uh, in, a pra in practice, you can take many thousands of years to change on a single issue if you don't understand that the reason why you're not changing is because you have a belief in your soul you're unwilling to change. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Thank that you. basically concludes our discussion about preclusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs>